In music, a cadenza is generally an improvised or written out ornamental passage played or sung by a soloist, usually in a free rhythmic style, and often allowing for virtuosic display. In other words, it's a chance to show off, and that's exactly what Kia is trying to do with this car. At over 40 grand though, let's hope designer Peter Schreier harnessed his inner Mozart. I'm your host, Alex LaFries. Let's hit the open road. When I first took delivery of this car, I was shocked at how good it looked in person. The creases on the side panels are more subdued in this smoky blue paint scheme, and those 18-inch alloys are some of the best to ever come out of the land of the morning calm. The front and rear lights look fantastic, and I can't tell you how many compliments I've gotten on this car. My only real gripe is the Kia badge itself. I think a new badge could do wonders for a company that's trying to change its image. We've all heard the saying, fake it till you make it, and that's exactly what Kia has done with the interior of the cadenza. From the faux wood on the center console and the steering wheel to the Bentley slash Breitling inspired analog clock, they've even put fake Alcantara on the ceiling. But it's kind of like Pamela Anderson. You know most of it's fake, but it looks so nice, you don't really care. The cadenza only comes in one trim level, but our tester has both the technology and luxury packages, which gives you heated and air-conditioned seats, Sirius XM radio, navigation, heated steering wheel, that cool sunshade that comes up in the back window. The list goes on and on. Our tester also has the white leather option, which amazingly doesn't cost any more and looks fantastic. Backseat legroom is nothing short of cavernous, and the extra sunroof will surely be appreciated. The trunk is big as well and has plenty of room for five or six dead bodies. The first thing you notice when you drive the cadenza is how quiet it is. The build quality is better than any Kia I've tested before, and I've tested just about all of them. There's no shakes, no rattles. When you close the door, it feels solid. And this is so important if Kia wants to try and compete in the near luxury market. The Cadenza is powered by a 3.3 liter direct injection V6, producing 293 horsepower and 255 pound-feet of torque, and is mated to a six-speed automatic transmission with optional paddle shifters. The whole package gets you 19 mpg in the city and 28 on the highway, which isn't bad for a car that's this big with nearly 300 horsepower. While the engine is great, the steering is less than stellar. My guess is Kia was going for a luxury feel, but all it really ends up feeling like is nothing. It's really numb, and I don't know why Kia didn't take the variable steering options found in the Sorento and put it into the Cadenza. Overall, it's a pretty nice driving experience, but don't make the mistake of thinking that it will be at all sporty. It is all about luxury. The Cadenza starts at 35,900, and our tester tops the range at 42,900. So would I buy one? Ultimately, the answer is yes. I would take one over a Ford Taurus, Chevy Malibu, or Toyota Avalon. But at nearly $43,000, the Cadenza is getting into some scary territory. The Lexus ES, which is a little smaller than this, starts at about 36 grand, and the GS, which is gonna be about the same size as this, starts at about 47, just five grand more than this. Now, ultimately, the Lexi at those price points are not gonna have the options of the Cadenza, but for my money, I will always take the better base car with less options. So ultimately, the Cadenza is a shirt and tie in a world full of suits. But then again, have you seen how casual we've gotten? I'm your host, Alex LaFries. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on The Open Road.